of the Lord this morning and welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Our opening hymn this morning is I Come With Joy and so I expect you to sing like you are coming with joy. Amen. Page 617 in your hymnal. church apostolic universal whose faith we now declare i believe in god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord who was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified dead and buried the third day he rose from the dead he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from whence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Want to... Uh, Take a moment of personal privilege and, and just say thank you to those of you who helped to support or came and offered uh, your help for us on Friday night at Restoration United Methodist Church. We had a one-day vacation Bible school. We had 17 kids, three youth helpers, and 12 adult helpers. And I believe, as Pastor Nathan said this morning, that church probably hasn't seen that many kids in a hot minute. Yeah. So we give thanks to the, what the Lord is doing there. Uh, other things that are coming up there is this Friday, we are opening our new thrift store for a back to school kind of sale. So please know that we are still open and taking your donations for that uh, thrift store and we are specifically aiming to uh, resource that community with clothes and school supplies. So if you have any of that for kids, we'd really appreciate that. And that's this Friday from two to six. Um, we've got Wednesday Night Live coming up soon on August 21st, so be thinking about whether or not you want to do a standing reservation for your meals on Wednesday night. We don't have the number for what that will be, but uh, if you pay that for the whole semester, uh, you have a meal provided for you every week. Whether you're there or not, it will be paid for, so um, be Thinking about that, that again starts on August 21st, and with that we'll be beginning our children's after school program and our youth programs will kick off on August 21st as well. Right behind that, uh, we are going to have some discipleship offerings for you this fall. The first one being Disciple 3. 
which Pastor Nathan and I are going to divide, and that will begin on August 28th. You'll get your book on that night. Uh, there is a way to register for that, or you can call the church office if you are interested in taking that. I believe we will take anyone, whether you've had Disciple One or not, for that class, so we invite you to do that. It'll be prophets in the fall and Paul in the spring, so if you're interested in that. Um, with the Wednesday, Excuse me, the Women's Thursday Morning Bible Study will begin September 5th, and we're going to study the prophet of Deborah for that study, so be thinking about that. And then we're going to begin a grief share support group that is a 13-week support group that will begin September 15th. So there are ways to get engaged and involved, as well as the other ongoing studies that we have on Mondays and Wednesday mornings as well. So please get plugged into your church this fall. We've got lots of things coming up. I think that's all that I have for in the announcements this morning. It's a fellowship of believers. We mention these names for your uh, Christian uh, prayer. If you have other prayer concerns, uh, you can put those on the registration pads. Let us know uh, if you have uh, other prayer concerns. Uh, but we call these names for you to specifically uh, keep in your prayers. Steve Young, Mike Stokes, Robbie Roberts, Jim Heisner, Karen Vickery, Zip Fossum, and Vivian Davis. With these and other concerns, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Holy God, how we thank you for the great gift that you have offered us. And to gather as a fellowship of believers uh, with uh, those who proclaim together their testimony of the living Christ. And we ask, Lord, that you would give us eyes to see your presence in our midst. And the fulfillment of your promise that where two or three would be gathered, that you would be in the midst. And give us open eyes, but also, Lord, give us expectant hearts. We've come, Lord, not just out of habit or rote, but we have come in need of a word from you, of a touch from you, from a sense of your presence. We've come looking for hope that can only come because you have raised from the dead, have promised to raise us from the dead, and promised to work in resurrection life for the needs that we bring before you today. We've come, Lord God, with circumstances that are beyond our control and beyond our power, needing, Lord, to know that you are sovereign and that you are loving and that you have uh, shed the blood of your own Son that we might be able to overcome through you. We come, Lord God, looking for grace uh, for the ways that we have fallen short and the ways that we are incapable of solving our own challenges. Father, we have come in need of a Savior. And so, Lord, give us open eyes to receive the gifts that have been handed before us. Give us faith, Lord, because you have always been faithful. Give us the capacity to trust because you have brought us this far by your mercy and grace alone. Quicken our hearts to live in joy, to live in victory because your grace is sufficient for this moment that is the hour of our need. And give us, Lord God, a sense 
of mission. So as we leave this place, we do not, we do not hold the good thing that we have received from your hand to ourselves. Help us, Lord, to be cleansed, to be empowered, to be renewed, to be fed. We ask these things in faith, believing that we have them through the name and through the blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. I invite Miss Janie to come up and lead us in the Children's Minute and all of our children. Come on, kiddos. It's Children's Minute time. You just couldn't wait today, could you, JP? And I couldn't wait to see you. Guess what I brought today? I want you to look in my little pan right here. Let me get it uncovered. What do you think that is right there? That squishy stuff. You want to touch it? Touch it. I don't know about that. I don't believe I'm going to touch that. Well, it's dough. It's dough. In case you can't see, it's dough. It's dough. And if I stick this in the oven for a while and let it stay, it'll pop out bread. Uh-huh. And you know what? We have to have bread. And it could look a lot like this loaf right here. Boy, I wish I could break bread, make bread like this. Look. And we use bread to make sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly, and we make hot dogs and pizza, but we have to start with bread. Uh-huh, and when we have bread, back in the day, bread was about all they had, and it was used to nourish them and fill them up with fuel. And you know what? In the Bible, there are lots of stories about bread. You remember back in the Old Testament when they were wandering in the, in the fields out there? God sent them bread, manna, to eat. And then just last week, we learned that Jesus took the five loaves of bread and fed 5,000 people with that bread. And we're going to talk about another story today. They're still following Jesus and asking questions all about it. And so, you know, a loaf of bread, it'll only last for a while. It'll get stale, and it'll get moldy and old, and we can't eat it. And then we have to do away with it. But Jesus talked and told the people, I am the bread of life. If you eat from me, you will live forever. And that's what he's teaching us today from the bread. And guess what? I got some bread for you today, JP. Look, I got some bread for you. Oh, yeah, that'll get you back. And I want you to take that bread, and I want you to remember that Jesus is the bread of life. Can you do that for me? Let's bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Dear God, we just thank you for Jesus because Jesus is the bread of life, and we will never hunger. We will live forever. And all God's children said, Amen. And you're staying in big church today. Yay! I'd like to invite our ushers to come forward at this time. Would you pray with me? O oh, author of good gifts. We thank you that uh, you do offer us bread and that you have given us much. And so we return to you in your storehouse this morning, that which is yours already. We thank you that you show us in scripture that you take what we offer and you multiply it. So we pray that that would be the case this morning as we offer our gifts and tithes. In Jesus' name, amen.
Please remain seated, uh, standing, I'm sorry, please remain standing for our reading from the gospel. Our gospel reading comes from the gospel according to John, John chapter 6. I'll give you a minute uh, to find that in your Bibles, and uh, we'll be reading from John's gospel chapter 6. We begin in the 24th verse, and we'll read through the 35th verse. Listen for the word of the Lord. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got themselves into the boats and they went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? And Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, you were looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. And then they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. And so they said to him, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe in you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And then Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. You may be seated, please. Last week, uh, Cole began a series on John chapter 6. We call this uh, portion of Scripture the Bread of Life Discourse. Um, there are many differences between the Gospels. Each of the four Gospels tells the Jesus story in its own unique way. Uh, but it's interesting that all four Gospels tell the story of Jesus gathering a crowd of people and multiplying a small amount of bread to feed thousands of people. And then, interestingly, because the way that the Gospels tell the story doesn't always put things in the same order, but very interestingly, in all four Gospels, it says that after Jesus fed the crowds, that uh, he had a miracle at the sea. They got into boats, and in John's Gospel, he walks on water, and others, he walks on water, he stills a storm, he, uh, he has a miracle at sea. And in all four Gospels, those two things are put together. What's unique in John's Gospel is that, that John doesn't just have Jesus give these people bread through a miracle of multiplication, but Jesus then begins to describe how the bread, the physical bread, is not the real bread that these people need. In John's Gospel, he has a long discussion of how the bread that they truly need is bread that, uh, that remains, that lasts, that God has something beyond a, the meeting of a physical need for a moment that God has offered them fulfillment for the deepest hungers within them. And Jesus teaches that he is the fulfillment of that need. He says, I am the bread of life. It's what's unique about John's gospel that uh, the Jesus story is built around seven signs. There's seven miracles that orient the whole Gospel of John, and seven times Jesus says, I am. There are seven ways that Jesus turns uh, the most important things about being human to himself. He says, I am the bread of life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the good shepherd. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, I am the light of the world. He says, I am the true vine. He says, I am the gate of the sheep. And in each one of these I am's, he takes one of the things about being a human being that is broken. He takes one of the things that all people are searching for, and he teaches us how we find the answer to our deepest need in him. He begins in all of these I am sayings with the saying that we find today, I am the bread of life. And, you know, I've, I've puzzled in, over the years thinking, well, what, is, what does he mean by that? And, and how do I actually live out seeking uh, lasting and meaningful bread for my hunger through Jesus? And that's, I think, what we are challenged to look at today. And one of the passages that's helped me to understand what Jesus is saying is another place where Jesus talks about bread. In Matthew chapter 7, uh, Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount says, Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and everyone who knocks, for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give 
good things to those who ask him. One time I was going through a difficult moment in my life, and I needed help. And so I went to a support group, and I was traveling, and there was a form of this particular kind of support group in a different place. And so instead of being with my usual crowd of people that I knew well, um, I was with a group of strangers. But it was okay, because I, I knew that I would get the help I was looking for. What was disappointing to me in this time when I visited a different group was that uh, those folks never got into the purpose of the group. They talked about how they were looking for volunteers. They talked about uh, the budget and how everybody needed to ante up for the dues. They spent a lot of time talking about who they were going to elect as their representative to their big group, the big organization. But they never got around to the purpose of the group. And it was disappointing to me because that day I needed to talk about what that group was for. I came looking for bread, and those people offered me a stone. I came hungry, and I walked away more hungry than when I arrived. I was hungry for hope and help and support, and I got none of those things. I left having just visited a business meeting to a bunch of strangers. How often do people come to church looking for bread? and walk away getting nothing but a stone? How many times do people come hungry for something substantive for the deepest needs in their lives? And how many times, instead of giving the bread, do they walk away being given nothing but entertainment or small talk? or fight about a controversy, a conversation about business matters, or politics, or a request for volunteers. <laughs> we do that too. <laughs> Many times, because I'm kind of a Bible nerd, you know, and I just love to read the Bible and to get into all the stuff about the Bible and see how it's structured and talk about the history and get into all the different words and the stuff. How many times do I, I hear the Holy Spirit knocking on the door of my heart while I'm leading a Bible study and say, do not just give them facts, give them bread. So people came hungry. If all they get is factoids, they will leave as hungry as they came. And I hope that I hear the voice of the Spirit and I offer bread. Because people come hungry. Sometimes they don't know that they're hungry, but we're all hungry. Sometimes we don't hold up the questions that are just below the surface in our heart to the Spirit of God. But that doesn't mean that they're not there. People live their lives with questions that are, that are crying out for the bread of life. How can I get free? How can I become the kind of person I need to be to raise these kids right? How can I get my head out of the loop of resentment that I feel for all the ways that people I love have betrayed me? How can I make the right decisions about living a life that means something? What is my life about? What should I do about this next step? Where can I find some people that I can surround myself with who will bring out the best of me instead of bringing out the worst in me.
Pray for him. Pray. Maybe the alarm is for all us all. Because there is a quiet desperation in each of us. A quiet desperation. Asking. Asking. Is there, is there some morsel somewhere to feed my soul's hunger? And, and Jesus speaks to hungry people. He speaks to hungry people and he says, you can find that answer in me. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Jesus claims that he alone, who is the one who has made us, has made us for himself, who has even planted within us the hungers that drive us in so many ways, Jesus claims that he is the satisfaction for all the gnawing hungers in our soul. Then he also claims that our God is generous to meet our needs. That we have a God who gives more than enough, not just enough to get us by. That we have a God that it says, gave them bread. He gave them bread. He gave them so much bread that there were 12 baskets left over. Our God is a God who crams a refrigerator full of styrofoam boxes of grace and goodness and hope and healing. It's who God is. He's not stingy. He doesn't want us to just get by. Our God gives us more than enough of the things that our soul cries out for. To be a Christian is to live our lives in the midst of that truth and, and seeking how, how Jesus being the satisfaction for our soul's longing, longings impacts our living from moment to moment. And say, how do I find Jesus to be the answer to my deepest need when I'm facing a difficult diagnosis? when I'm wrestling with despair, when I'm presented with a tremendous opportunity, when I'm experiencing a betrayal or I'm facing a difficult choice, at every turn of life, constantly going to Christ to be the one who meets our need. Turning to Christ with the questions that need to come from the bottom to the top aware of our hunger, not pushing it down or trying to distract from the hunger, but knowing because we have a God who meets our needs, we can be open about our hungers. That we can push aside all the things that we use to quell our hunger, things that do not satisfy. And this is what Jesus teaches us in the midst of this long discourse we're going to be talking about for four more weeks, Jesus challenges us to recognize the true value of what he offers to hungry souls because he is the only bread that remains. There are all kinds of things that we'll seek out that might give us a sense of satisfaction for a moment, but they don't last. And Jesus is the only bread that remains. How does, that, how does that work? What does it mean? Now think about the things that you seek out uh, for a momentary satisfaction. Things that seem to scratch the itch for a minute, but they don't last. Not necessarily bad things, but they can be. For many years, from time to time, I've seen a, a comedian and talk show host who um, is entertaining, but he also is pretty contemptuous of the Christian faith or any religion, and uh, is also very proud of never having been married and having 
one romantic conquest after another throughout his life and being contemptuous of the institution of marriage. But now he's getting old. And every now and then, some video of this guy pops up on my feed. <laughs> And his friends are old too, you know? So he's talking to these guys who are old guys, and they're like, don't you think you might have missed something <laughs> to be alone now that you're old? And he used to be contemptuous of the question, but more and more you can see, like, all those romantic conquests made him proud for a moment, but now he's alone and unsatisfied. And many people have many loves that come and go, they satisfy for a moment, but that's a different thing altogether than to have one love, to share a life with one person. How much more satisfying is it to have a love that remains? Many people will seek fulfillment in accomplishment. They'll look at how much money is in their paycheck, and if that number is going up, they feel like they are fulfilled, but only for a minute. How much money do you need to make to be happy? More. <laughs> right? And then when you get more, how much does it take to make you fulfilled? A little bit more. And then you may be like really thrilled with your raise or your bonus or whatever for a little while. And then how much do you need to be happy? More. And then one day, you will lie on your bed, hopefully with the people that you love surrounding you. And all that more and all that money is going to mean nothing. But what will matter is the people who are around you because the love that you offered them is the thing that you accomplished in your life that remains. How many of y'all remember when you were a child and you went to vacation Bible school? Anybody remember being like a little person going to vacation Bible school? And for some of y'all, that's been a little while ago. Right? And just think. Just think of all the things that you've done where you worked really, really hard in your life. And uh, it went towards something that maybe felt good to have accomplished in a minute. But then the satisfaction of that went away. And just think. When you went to vacation Bible school as a child, you had no idea what a pain in the neck it is to put on a vacation Bible school. <laughs> right? When you were a child, you had no idea the work that goes into it, how many volunteers it takes, and how, how, how hard it is to get the food out there, and all the decorations to organize all the people in. And this one didn't show up. We've got to call another one. Da -da 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 -da, you know. And that one skinned his knee, and we've got to cover over here. There's a lot of work to put on a vacation Bible school. Amen? Amen. That child didn't know. But that child was you. And 50 years later, 60 years later, maybe more for some of y'all, here you are in the house of the Lord with the same love in your heart that somebody introduced into your life at Vacation Bible School. They did something that maybe just felt like nah, being roped into something. You know, Maybe their wife said, you're coming, Jim. You know, who knows why they came. But they came and they did something that will never be taken away. It'll never be taken away. It remains. It remains. So love is what's left when everything else fades away. When all the stuff that we've gone after to find fulfillment, 
to find meaning, to quell the hunger in our heart, to scratch the itch. When all that's gone away, love is what lasts. The love of God that's been offered to us in Jesus Christ is what lasts. We can't lose it. We can't lose it. And there's, there's people who give their lives to Christ, and they know, man, this is it. I found love that is love. I found the one person who can love me unconditionally and not mess it up. The one person who won't fail in their love of me. I found the one person who knows me who I am and loves me totally anyhow. I found the one person, the one person who I can say anything to They won't judge me, but this Jesus is going to love me completely. I found the one person that I can put my life into, and my life will mean something and be worth something. I found the one. I found the one. And then life happens, and we drift. And the hungers come up again, and we've... we've, uh, We've allowed sometimes the the name of Jesus to become just part of our religious lexicon, just something that we say. We allow our faith to be something that we do, but we have forgotten sometimes how our hunger was fulfilled in him. And once again, we go to other things. That's who we are. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's just how we are. It's, (laughs) It's life. Amen? Am I the only one? But today, hear the word of the Lord. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And he looks at you. He doesn't look at you in judgment. And he doesn't shame you. He sees you for the hunger. And he says, please let me fill you up. Please let me satisfy you. I love you. I've loved you from before your imagining. I've always loved you. And I love you completely. And I look at your hunger, and I look at your need, and I want to fulfill it. As a father wants to feed his children, he wants you to leave the day with the bread and not a stone. He said, even you who are bad fathers know how to put bread on the table. Give good gifts to your children. How much more the perfect, loving, completely good and holy Father that you have in heaven wants you who have come here hungry and tired and distracted and needy. He wants you, he wants you to leave full. Turn back to him. Maybe, maybe you have never known Christ to be the one who is the meter of your deepest need. Maybe you've never known him to be that. Maybe all you heard was, God wants you to do this and that and da-da-da-da-ba-ba and give you a list of stuff that you can never quite fulfill. Maybe all you have ever heard about God is that he's got some kind of a checklist where hopefully you will have checked enough of the boxes to go to heaven when you die. Maybe that's what you know about him. I want you to know. I want you to know that Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And whoever eats of me will never be hungry again. I am true bread. I am true bread. All you heard about Christianity is not what Jesus said about himself. He wants you to find what's real, what matters, what lasts, what satisfies in him today. This morning we take Holy Communion. We oftentimes think it means different things. 
it does mean different things. But if it means anything, it means that God gave us a way of worshiping Him where we would take bread and eat it and be told this is the body of Christ. So that you can not only hear, and you can not only get in your mind, but you can get in your very body, in your very mouth, that He is the one who satisfies you. This afternoon, we go to the hospital or someplace to eat, and that'll be delicious. But by tonight, you'll be hungry again. But if you truly let him into your soul, and you truly seek, to him, seek him with your need, and you truly let him be the provider of your soul's desire, you'll have bread that remains. As we take Holy Communion, I, I pray that you wouldn't just take it as something that we do, that when you come down to this altar and you receive that bread, that it would be like an altar call and you would hold up your hunger to Him. And as you take that bread that you say, Lord, please fulfill me where I need you. I need you, Lord. I need you, Lord. And I promise you, your good Father, when you ask for bread, will never give you a stone. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you turn in your hymnal to page 12, you'll find our order for communion. I'd invite those who will help us to serve communion to come forward. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful, Merciful God, God, we, we confess, confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We, we have, have failed, failed to be an obedient church. We have, we have not, not done your will. will. We, we have broken your law. We, we have, have rebelled, rebelled against your love. love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and with all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, 
He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we might be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we partake of one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. is broken for you, the blood of Christ shed for your redemption. This table is the table of the Lord. It is uh, not this congregation's table, and so all are welcome. All for whom Christ died are welcome to share in Holy Communion today. That means you. That's everybody. Uh, If you have gifts that you would like to give to help those in need, you can leave those at the altar rail, and they will go to Chipotle Family Ministries to help those in our community uh, who, who are struggling. And if you have a food allergy, there are non allergenic wafers available. Uh, We'll receive communion where I will give you a piece of bread, and you can receive that as soon as it's given to you. And then uh, there's a little cup, and you just take that, and you can leave the cup at the altar rail. The table of the Lord is prepared. The people are welcomed.
kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Rise and go forth, the citizens of his kingdom. If you look to your bulletin, you'll find the prayer that we share, taking communion. Join me as we say together, Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you'll turn in your hymnals to number 629, uh, we'll sing our final hymn and sing it as a prayer uh, to God. You satisfy the hungry heart. Let us stand as we sing. You satisfy.
receive this blessing. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, keep, and sustain you with himself, with all that you need and more than you need. And may you leave this place with a full heart to offer good things that you have received to all that you meet. Go in peace, and may the love of God go with you. Amen.